So a little nugget of wisdom today. To be able to pay reparations, you have to be the person that committed the wrong. It's just kind of a biblical standard. And it is law in our land as well today, which comes from the biblical standard. So the idea that you can have people that are generations removed from a wrong to pay for what was done um, is really not applicable. It's kind of absurd and silly, quite frankly, um, because if you want to follow that theory um, and that thought pathologically through to a conclusion and you want to apply that to other things, that means also that um, kids these days whose parents have like murdered people in the past, they then should be in jail. Um, kids whose parents in the past who have raped people, they should be in jail. Um, lawsuits that have been won against people, then their kids, generations, their grandkids, their grandkids, grandkids, so on and so forth, and they still have to pay for that. So here's the thing. When something that's wrong is made right, then it's done. And so in our society and in our nation, we did have slavery at one time. We did, and that was wrong. Um, these days, <laughs> people want to take what has happened in the past and take on the trauma of that today, which is super unhealthy. Um, but then they also want to have someone held responsible for the perceived trauma that they are feeling, which is honestly illegitimate. They're, I mean, they're enslaving themselves with their own mindset, right? Um, so they are not uh, physically enslaved, but they are enslaved mentally. And it's because of their own choice to ascribe to that victim mentality. Because um, we talked about, there's a bug in front of my face. Um, we talked about the other day, you know, that we are not victims. We are made as overcomers. And that even though unfair and dumb stuff happens in this life, and some people do suck, there are people that are racist. Um, but the more you use the word to cover everything, it loses its meaning. And the, um, you know, places where we do still have um, some racist people and some really narrow mindsets, they just kind of get overlooked because now everybody's racist, no matter whether they really are or not. So the word just loses meaning and it's kind of stupid at that point. Um, and then there really isn't any, uh, any way to actually look at the true injustices um, that happen, right? And so we have this idea, there's actually an LBGTQ, LMNOP, whatever, Alphabet Soup um, fundraiser um, to to support people who choose to live a certain lifestyle, right? Just FYI, let's have a fundraiser for those that are unvaccinated because we're increasingly more marginalized, right? And we're going to continue to lose liberties because we choose not to be vaccinated. So whoever wants to get on board with a fundraiser for that, let's do it. Um, but so on this um, uh, fundraiser, um, I believe is in the state of Utah that I saw, they are also charging, uh, if you're white, if you have less melanin in your skin, because what does white even mean? Because you have a lot of kids with one white and one black parent. Um, so if you're white, whatever that means, if you have less melanin in your skin, you're going to pay reparations at an LGBTQ thing that's not even to do with race. It's to do with sexual orientation. But you're going to pay more at the door for people decades ago that had slaves that also were less melanated. Um, i just saying, insanity, crazy town, weird. Like, who believes this and why? I don't know. It's so sad. It's really, really so sad because now you have um, not only – um, you know, a lifestyle being celebrated that is not of God. You can choose whatever you want to do, I'm not judging you for it, not my job, but my job is to speak the truth. And it's less than God's best for someone's life for them to live an alternate lifestyle um, as far as their sexuality goes. And there's many other sins that we can talk about. We all have room to improve again. So not being judgmental, just speaking candidly. And if we can't do that, then we don't have communication. Um but, and then you're tying it together, this one uh, agenda with this other agenda that has to do with the whole race baiting thing and this fact that people think there's systemic racism. I'm like, if there was systemic racism, you would not have mixed children. You wouldn't have white and black people marrying. 
again, whatever white and black means. You wouldn't have black people uh, sitting in office in this country. You wouldn't have people with more melanin in their skin being superstars and actresses and all this stuff. So, you know, if it was a, a system that rigged it against people with highly melanated skin, you wouldn't be seeing that. And so it's just really interesting to me um, in our culture of non-accountability and our culture of the blame game and our culture of the victim mentality um, that we now see this idea of reparations for things that have happened way long ago. I am all for the biblical principle. If you break my stuff, you replace it. If you borrow it and you don't return it, that is on your head until you make it right. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. I'm a big, a big fan of you return it, you leave it better than you found it. That's a biblical principle of stewardship, okay? And so I'm not against making things right, but you can't hold someone accountable for something they didn't do. So that's so weird that people don't want to hold themselves or other people accountable right now, right here and now, this day and age for what they're doing currently. They want to blame everything on everybody else. But then they want this accountability for like hundreds of years ago. Is our country perfect? Nope. Are some people dumb? Yep. But we don't have any kind of privilege for skin color other than um, affirmative action and all of this other stuff that is going on right now to say that this group of people needs to be treated specially because of the color of their skin. Hello? That's racist, people. That is racist to say your skin is lighter, so you must be racist or you must be privileged. You're judging someone by the color of their skin. That's racist. Heller, come on, peeps. Like, what? What, what is wrong with common sense? It's not common anymore. It's just not. People don't read their Bible. They listen to these televangelists who haven't read their Bible either, apparently, because they're spitting all kinds of lies. Um, and they think that it's truth, but they don't know any better because they didn't study for themselves. They're listening to these activist groups who are funded by the elites up top who are trying to equally enslave all of us. They don't give a flip about if you make it in life. They're not doing anything in the neighborhood. They're not helping anybody. They're pimping you out for an agenda and you're buying into it hook, line, and sinker. That kind of sucks, but it's your choice, you know? So it's just, the world is upside down. It's crazy. And I am just trying simply to be like, open your eyes, use your brain, step back, check your heart and your emotions, and question what is going on in the world today. The examples I'm talking about are simply a handful of examples. There's tons of them. I can make this video be hours or days long, really, with all that's wrong in the world. But at the end of the day, if we can go back to scripture, if we can look at Abba's ways, if we can say, your will, not mine, Father, and we can't very well be saying we're walking in Abba's will and we're following his ways if what we're doing is at enmity with him, right? We can't be sinning, transgressing his commandments, his Torah, his loving instruction, but then say that we're following him. That's speaking out both sides of your mouth. That's being a hypocrite. Um, that's calling what's good evil and evil good, okay? And if we don't have Torah, if that's done away with and that no longer matters, then we can't have sin. We also can't have righteousness. And there's no need for grace or Messiah in the first place. So it's a self-defeating idea to say that the law is done away with. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It doesn't reconcile with the rest of scripture. Messiah's own word says, I came to fulfill it. I came to show you the goal of it. I came to walk it out perfectly for you. I did not come to abolish. Scripture also says not one jot or tittle of the uh, scriptures. So and when that was written, there was no New Testament. New. Um, it was all Torah prophets writings. It was Tanakh, right? Um, not not any of that will, will um, go away until heaven and earth does. And I'm just, so yeah, it's still here. <laughs> so I just want to encourage you all, okay? Like reparations was an example of just the crazy town mindset that is here in the world today. Um, again, if you wrong somebody, you should make it right. But if 12 or 20 generations ago, one of your family members wronged somebody, um, it's not your responsibility to make it right. Right. So, um, that's just one example. 
um, fundraising for a group of people who have a life choice to do a certain thing. Um, that's also crazy town. Um, not holding people accountable for what they do here and now and transgressing other people and doing them wrong and doing them harm, um, like murdering people in the streets or burning buildings or, you know, things like that in the name of whatever, um, you know, that's also wrong. So we're not holding anybody accountable for that. So it's just really interesting, all of the like false dichotomies, all of the hypocrisy, all of the double, double standards. But why is this? Because this is Satan's playground right now, guys. This is not the kingdom. The kingdom is coming. It's breaking through into this world. Um, and it's doing it by those of us who are holding to the testimony of Yeshua, Messiah, and keeping the commandments, right? We are walking out kingdom things in this world right now. And so I want to encourage those of you who are doing that to take heart. Um, because it's only going to get harder <laughs> and we're just going to have to get stronger and more convicted and more determined. Um, and we're going to have to trust the Lord's either going to protect us or when it's our time to go, it's our time to go. I mean, if you look at the 12, they did not meet so fun of an end, right? Um, so when we talk about it costing something to follow Messiah, yeah, it might cost you friends, it might cost you popularity, it might cost you followers, it might cost you whatever in this world, but it also could cost you your life. Um, but that's just temporary too, because we do have an eternal kingdom, um, and an eternal soul and an eternal place to be. Um, so take heart that, you know, even if, even if the enemy succeeds and takes you out of this physical world, he doesn't take you out of anything that matters. This is just a season. This is just practice and it matters because we are preparing for the eternal kingdom. So Anyway, lots of food for thought, being super candid. Um, if you were offended by anything in this video, good. God uses offense to show us wounds and insecure places in our own hearts that we need to take to him and heal because the reason that we're offended is because we're wounded and we are focused on our stuff, right? So if we're healed, we're hold. If we're healed and hold and about him and not ourselves and we're truly about other people and what is best for them, not maybe what they want, but what's best according to scripture, um, we don't get offended at stuff. Like we're unshakable and movable oaks of righteousness. So, um, you know, you have two paths that you can take when you get offended. You can go down the road of bitterness and slandering people, committing Lashon Hurrah, one of the worst sins ever because you can't take your words back. Um, so, you know, that requires a lot of repentance and a lot of repair and still there's natural consequences when we speak ill of people. Um, so evil speech is, you know, not a good thing. I mean, you're only hurting yourself, quite honestly. Um, but, or you can decide, ooh, that just, that just struck something in me. I got work to do and thank you person, even though that sucked and I'm kind of mad at you for a second, but thank you for exposing the fact that I have some work to do and I need to bring that to the father and be healed. So take heart, be encouraged, um, repent of your sin, go back and study Torah, um, give your life to Abba father and believe in Yeshua Messiah and all that he did and follow his example unto obedience. Have a good day.